In this tutorial, you're going to learn how to code a digital clock with a simple bit of JavaScript and just a touch of CSS. Hi, this is James from Junior Developer Central and welcome to this tutorial on coding a simple digital clock. Uh, if you have a second before we start, don't forget to subscribe to support the channel below and so that you don't miss out on any future updates. So uh, we're going to be coding a clock very much like the one that's on the page now and as you can see it's fairly simple but you'll get a chance to style it in your own way later on um, but it's the point of the project really is to kind of understand a little bit about how date objects work in JavaScript and how you can use the uh, built-in date object to actually get the current time and format it in a way that's suitable to the project or app that you're working on. So uh, this is the end result, we'll get started now with a blank canvas and build everything from scratch. Okay, so here we are on a blank project. Uh, I'm actually using CodePen to code this up, but feel free to follow along in your favorite text editor. It does the same thing. And we're first of all going to start off by creating our JavaScript function, which will actually get and display the time for us. Uh, we'll get it working and then we'll go back and, and refactor it and refine it a little bit once we've got it working. Uh, so I'm going to create a new function. I'm going to call it just get time and as the name suggests it will actually get the time for us and I'm going to use an arrow function for that and in there we're going to put some code which will actually work out what the current time is and return it as a string. So working with dates and times in JavaScript is a, a little bit cumbersome in the sense that you need to create a new date object and then call different methods on it to extract different parts of the date. You can't just format it in the way that you want unless you use a third party library like moment.js for example. So I'm going to first of all create a new date object and I'll just call it date just so it's obvious uh, what that actually is. And now we've got that object we can start extracting the hours, minutes and seconds of the time. So I'm going to do this by creating a new variable first of all called hours which will obviously hold the hours for our time and I'm just going to say date.getHours. So again we're calling methods on that date object to actually extract the different parts of the time that we need. So the next thing I'm going to do is get the minutes for the time. So I'm going to say const minutes is equal to date.getMinutes. And you'll notice I'm using a const here for minutes because we're not going to change the value that's inside minutes once we've got it from the date. Uh, but with hours, we might want to do some formatting, uh, which I'll show you a little later on. And the next thing I'll do is get the seconds. And the method to get that from the date object is get seconds. So at this point now, we've got the component parts to actually generate our date. Uh, so I'm just going to test this out by returning the hours, minutes and seconds inside a template literal. And so I've just used a template literal to return those hours, minutes and seconds, all concatenated together in one string separated by colons, just to distinguish the different parts of the time. Okay, so if we run this function get time on the console now, we would actually get that value come back, but we can't see that here on the web page that we're working on. Uh, so let's just create a HTML element and actually update that with the contents of get time when it returns. Okay, so you can see over there on the left hand side of the screen that we've actually got the time being printed out. It's about seven minutes past eight here when I'm recording this. So the first thing you'll probably notice is that the seven's kind of displaying a bit awkwardly. We want, would really like to display it as zero seven. Uh, so we'd need to pad that out with some zeros if it's a, a small number. And so we could do this using some if statements to check if the number's less than 10 um, and being a single digit, but there's uh, actually some string functions that can help us with this. For example, there's pad end and pad start, which actually puts in zeros or whatever character you want to if the string is uh, shorter than it should be. So let's add that onto our minutes just to demonstrate. So now when the code runs again, you can see that the uh, seven, the minutes, has been padded out with a zero. And we can do that for the seconds and hours as well, so that we don't get any uh, funny formatted uh, date times coming back. So there we have it. So if our seconds was less than 10 at the moment, or indeed the hours as well, we'd actually uh, get the padding at the start of those numbers. And you'll notice I've had to wrap the uh, call to get hours, minutes and seconds in a uh, string constructor. 
Uh, and it's basically just because the get hours, minutes, and seconds functions give us back a, a number. So in order to use the pad start function, uh, we actually need to use that on a string. Um, so there's a few different ways to convert our numbers to strings, but this, for simplicity's sake and for ease of uh, readability, is just a, a good way of doing it. You'll notice as well, though, we've got some repeated code, so it seems like a bit of a waste having to do that uh, string constructor and the pad start for each of those elements. And I'll show you a, a way that I came up with to uh, reduce that code and reduce to having to repeat yourself uh, in a few moments. But before we do that, there's two other things I want to do. Uh, first of all, we want to turn this into a 12 hour clock so we can show PM and AM, depending on whether we're in the morning or afternoon stroke evening. And also we actually need to make our clock tick. So we need to set up some kind of timer to actually uh, increment that as time goes on. Uh, so let's deal with the first problem first. So what we're going to do is create uh, another uh, variable up here in our function and I'll just call that AMPM. Um, the technical term I guess is the meridian um, but you can call the variable whatever you like. But this will just literally hold the text AM or PM depending on whether it's morning or afternoon. Uh, so the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to do a ternary operator and I'm going to say if the hours and uh, we should probably put this just below where we've actually defined our hours otherwise that will cause a problem for us. And I will say uh, if the hours is greater than 12, or rather greater than or equal to 12, then we're actually later in the day, we're in the afternoon, so I'm just going to say uh, store the value of p.m. Uh, if not, so it must be morning, so let's store a.m. And then we can just append that onto our string that returns from the function, and let's just enclose it here. So you can see as we're it's 8 o'clock in the evening, we've got PM, um, but the only problem is that we don't want to show 20 hours, we want to actually show that it's 8. Uh, so the best thing to do here is just say if the hours is greater than or equal than to 12 again, uh, do an if statement and just reduce the hours by uh, 12. So let's do that now. Okay, so now you can see the time being displayed as 8 p.m., uh, which is great, um, but, we've, but we've actually lost that padding uh, at the start of that number, and I'll come back uh, to that in a second when we I'll show you how to remove that duplicate code in terms of the string constructor and the pad start. But you can see that if statement's working, uh, if the hours is greater than 12, then we reduce it by 12, uh, and of course if it was morning, that if statement wouldn't fire, and we wouldn't need to worry about actually subtracting that time. So before we wrap up our JavaScript and neaten it up, let's actually make our clock tick. Uh, so we need to do that by setting up an interval. And I'll just go down here just below our get time function. And I'm actually going to create another function. I'll call it init. And this will be called when we're ready to actually start the clock. So it might be on the actual page load, for example. And in that function, uh, I'm going to use the set interval feature in JavaScript. And what this does is basically it uh, will allow you to call a function every so many seconds or every so many milliseconds. And so it takes two arguments, the first being the actual function you want to call, and the second one being uh, the, the interval you want to call it at. So that one's pretty straightforward. We want to call it every uh, second because we want to tick every second that goes by. So we just pass in a value of 1000 for 1000 milliseconds. Uh, and so the first argument is the actual function, the callback that we want to call. Uh, so I'm just going to pass in an anonymous function into the set interval first argument. And in here, we're just going to move that bit of code that we had earlier on where we uh, update the time element in the HTML code that we've got. Uh, so let's just format that a bit nicely. And so this interval will run every one second and go and call the get time function and get the result of that and put it into the time element. And you'll notice that the time's actually disappeared off the page and that's because um, this init function hasn't been called. And as I say, you can load this uh, whenever you want on your page. So it might be on the page load or it might be when the user clicks a button or, or some other event occurs. But as long as that init function is called, uh, the set interval will be created and you can now see the time is updating every second that goes by. So that's pretty much it for the JavaScript code. But before we leave it, I do want to tidy it up a little bit. And there was one thing that was uh, kind of bugging me at the moment as well, and that's the, uh, the eight is showing without that padding because it's been removed when we actually uh, subtract 12 from the number. And so the first thing I'm going to do is just remove those string constructors from around the hours. 
and the minutes and seconds too. And so the function continues to go ahead, but you can see those seconds are just ticked over, for example, and instead of saying 0, 4, 5, 6, etc., it's just showing us the single digit numbers. So what I'm actually going to do, instead of creating a template literal directly here, uh, I'm going to uh, put uh, the hours... Uh, minutes and seconds into an array uh, and actually map that array uh, to different values. Uh, so let's have a look at what that'll look like. So I've just created a new array and I've called it time components and it's just got literally every element of our time that we want uh, to, to display uh, including the AM PM as well and what I'm actually going to do is call the map function on that array which allows me to uh, change the values to some extent um, that are contained within the array um, and for each sort of component that we've got in there we, we can pass a, a callback function and uh, so CMP will just literally be hours, minutes and seconds and AM, PM uh, as it iterates through the array and what I'm actually going to do is return a template literal from the map function so we're going to convert um, what for hours and minutes and seconds they're actually still numbers I'm going to uh, change the value into a string by using the string constructor and then call that pad uh, start function onto that. So for the first two characters, make sure they're at least uh, zero. Okay, just make sure all of the uh, quotes and brackets and so forth like that uh, match up okay. Uh, and so what I'll actually do now, instead of returning the individual uh, parts of the time individually through the template literal, I'll just say for the uh, t return, the uh, time uh, components, uh, but just join them together. And we could say join them with the uh, colon just to separate them out. And I just realized I missed a bracket off the end of that map function there, so it's causing some errors. But now you can see that the time components have been joined together after they've been mapped uh, to a string with the pad start. And now we're getting a zero in front of our eight. And when the seconds tick over as well, when they're less than 10, uh, we actually get a zero before those as well. Uh, so that's looking quite good. Um, there's all the, one other thing I'm going to do just before we finish off this mapping process, and it's going to be uh, to put uh, a span around these uh, uh, template literals that come out here. And the reason for that is we can actually target it with some CSS um, and actually put some spacing around our characters, uh, around our digits if we need to as well. Uh, so with that in mind, let's turn our attention to the CSS itself and add some style to the clock that we've just created. So uh, the first thing I'm going to do, uh, I'm using SCSS here just to give me a bit of extra flexibility. Uh, let's just close down that HTML tab because we don't really need that. Um, so the first thing I'll do is just make the font size uh, a bit bigger. Uh, so let's set that as uh, 86 pixels. Okay, so that's nice and large, we can see that. And the other thing I'm going to do is just set the body up uh, as a flex container that fills 100% of the uh, viewport size. Um, so first thing I'm going to do is just say display flex. Uh, and what that will allow me to do is just to say that uh, put the, uh, uh, the content itself, so justify content, and set that as centered. So we're centering it in the page, and if I say the height is 100 viewport height uh, units, then that will uh, full, uh, fill up the rest of the page. And the other thing we're going to do is target the actual time uh, element as well. So if you remember, we created a, a div element that just had an ID of time. Uh, so I'll target that um, with a hash and a time. And one thing I'm going to do is just change the color. Uh, and you can feel free to obviously mess around with these settings yourself or come up with your own uh, style and, and design. This is where you can kind of add your own fonts and colors and things like that. But uh, I'm just picking out some things that I thought looked quite good. And I'll also set this as a flex box as well. Uh, and the reason for that is I can then call uh, align items and just say tell that to be centered on the page. Uh, and as you can see, because the uh, parent uh, element, which is the body, is 100%, you can see that the uh, that this uh, time item is now uh, nicely aligned in the center of the page. Okay, so we added some spans uh, in our last part of our JavaScript, just to, around each of the uh, components of the time. So there's a span here, 
and there's one here, etc. So what I can actually do now, because um, I, I can nest this because we're using SCSS, is I can just say let's put some padding, um, top and bottom, uh, and obviously some on the side as well. Let's bring it back together again. So that looks pretty good. We could maybe try going a bit bigger, maybe. 1.5, no, that's, that's a little bit too big. Uh, so yeah, let's stick with half a, a relative M for that. Um, so that's spaced out quite nicely and it's obviously padded. Um, the last thing I'm gonna do is just add a Google font um, to it just to kind of spice it up a little bit. And in CodePen, I can just go into the uh, head. So um, I've just added in here the uh, special elite font, <coughs> which uh, comes from Google Fonts. So you can just go over to the Google Fonts website and uh, pick out a font that you like, or from any other kind of font uh, repositories that you can get hold of. And let's just set that as the font family for, like, let's say, the time uh, element that we've got there. And as you can see, it's got that nice brush stroked type uh, font effect and uh, it just helps to make the uh, text that's been displayed make look at make it look a little bit more like a digital clock or at least a little bit more interesting than it was previously so that's pretty much it for this tutorial um, so it's some fairly simple JavaScript and all you need to really remember is that you need to use the get hours get minutes and get seconds function from the a date object and once you've got those you can start playing around with them and, and start to format them how you like uh, I, th I think the uh, the kind of idea of mapping these time components to uh, reduce the amount of code that you have to type uh, is also good because if you wanted to kind of remove or extend any of those you'd literally just have to see, for example if we didn't want seconds anymore on the page you could literally just uh, take that out of your array and it would display accordingly. So I hope you found that useful. Do go back and uh, run through it again if you're uh, confused about anything. And if you do come up with a, a unique design, uh, feel free to drop me a link to the code in a comment below. It'd be good to check that out. Just before you go, don't forget to subscribe to the channel for more video updates. And I'll see you next time.